We are live. All right. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, y'all can do better than that. Good morning. Good morning. There we go. All right, guys. My name is Andy McKee. I'm the owner here at the Zoology Zone Science Center. Um, we're going to be doing something very special for you guys. So I'm going to be talking to you guys, and I'm also going to be talking to you guys. All right, so this is my audience uh, that we're going to be putting this on YouTube. So um, you guys make sure if you want to watch this experiment or uh, you want to watch the story again, definitely subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's just the Zoology Zone Science Center. We really appreciate your all support. Make sure and hit that subscribe button uh, and your notifications. Turn your notifications on so you know when we post, all right? All right, guys, so um, we are doing a really cool thing here now, and every single month, we are going to be focusing on a specific animal group and we are going to be focusing on a specific area of science. So every Wednesday and Friday, we're going to do story times. Wednesdays, we're going to do story time about that animal group and then we'll teach you about an animal. And then on Friday, we're going to talk about that science group or that science area and we're going to do a science experiment about that that you all can actually do at home. These are super simple, super cool experiments that we'll be able to show you guys um, here in just a minute. So this month's animal group is all about alligators and crocodiles. Now, I don't know, has anybody been here before or been maybe to our place at the mall? Is, is this everybody's first time? Oh my gosh, okay, well we've got quite a few first timers here, so thank you guys so much for coming in. A little bit about us, we are West Virginia's only reptile and amphibian rescue. Uh, so we are a nonprofit, no-kill shelter um, that deals pr uh, primarily with reptiles and amphibians. So we have a whole bunch of animals here that are all rescued and rehabilitated. All the animals that you've seen today and that, and that you will see are all rescued and rehabilitated animals. So they all have a really cool species to be able to teach with, but they also have a really neat rescue story to be able to teach with as well. But we have everything from snakes, lizards, alligators, turtles, tortoises, giant tortoises, giant snakes. We've got all kinds of animals here that we're able to teach with. So I teach something called herpetology. Herpetology is the study of reptiles and amphibians. But I also was a middle school science teacher. So I taught different areas of science that all have to work together in order for our, uh, our planet to work. System is something that is made up of all kinds of different parts that all have to work together for that system to work. So it's been really, really hot this past couple months, hasn't it? Right? And we've been putting our air conditioners on a lot, right? Has anybody ever seen the inside of an air conditioner? Yeah. Is it one just big block and the air conditioner works, you turn it on and it works? No, it's made up of a whole bunch of little itty bitty tiny pieces and wires and capacitors and all these different things. And if one of those little pieces breaks, the entire air conditioner breaks. And if the air conditioner breaks, it's going to get really hot. And if it gets really hot, we're all going to have sweaty butts. And nobody wants sweaty butts, do they? No, the answer is no. If you said yes, I'll worry about you. All right. But that is the way a system works. Every little piece has to work together in order for that system to work. So if we live in an ecosystem, we live in an earth system. So there are all different parts of science that all have to work together in order for our earth to work, right? This is a very fragile ecosystem. So if too many things don't work right, our whole system fails. So this month, we are going to be talking about weather, right? And every single week, we are going to talk about a different area of weather. So today, this week, we are going to be talking about wind. Now, has anybody ever experienced wind before? No. No? Ever? No? All right, hold on. You're going to experience. Watch this. There you go. You just experienced it. Merry Christmas. Don't say I, ever, I never give you anything. Wind is all around us right now. We've probably seen all kinds of weather reports. Uh, meteorologists, if you're watching this, stay with me here. We've seen the scientists on TV called meteorologists that predict the weather and, um, well, do their best to predict the weather. I always say that I should have been a meteorologist because I can be wrong half the time and still have a job, right? <laughs> it's funny. But um, 
Meteorologists are scientists that can look at different weather patterns and predict the weather, right, to the best of their ability. But what people don't realize is weather is all kind of broken down into some simple parts. And wind seems very, very crazy and complex. But do you know that wind is literally formed by the uneven heating of the earth? That's it. So if anybody asks you what causes wind, it is the uneven heating of the earth by the sun. Pretty crazy, right? Now, we talk about uneven. So even means it's all straight across. It is one common thing. It is one line. There's not ups and downs. Uneven is ups and downs and ups and downs. So we live in West Virginia where there's a whole bunch of mountains. Now is that even or is that up and down, up and down, up and down? Right. So when the sun is out, do you think all of West Virginia gets heated up the exact same way by the sun? No. Some of the higher places heat up a little bit better and some of the lower places don't get the same amount of sunlight. So that, so the surface of the earth, gets heated at different, uh, 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 different levels, right? And when, those, when you talk about the entire earth and the sun heating up the entire earth, it heats differently and it causes different pressure systems. And those pressure systems, when they come together, it moves the gases in our atmosphere. And that is called wind. Pretty cool, right? So wind sounds super complex, but if you ever wonder, I wonder where wind is coming from. It is literally from the uneven, uneven heating of the earth by the sun. Pretty cool, right? Now we're gonna see how these gases move by our science experiment after this story. But right now, we are gonna read a story called Feel the Wind, which is really pretty neat. This is a really good story. And it is written and illustrated by Arthur Doros. I hope I said that right. So Feel the Wind by Arthur Doros. All right. Have you felt the wind blowing through your hair? I know I have. <laughs> it's funny because I don't have any hair. <laughs> it's a choice. Wind is moving air. Air is what we breathe. Has anybody ever breathed air before? Right? It is everywhere around us, even though we can't see it. Pretty cool, right? It's everywhere. We can't see air, and we really can't see wind, but we can see the wind move things. Wind pushes clouds across the sky. Wind flutters the leaves of trees and makes ripples on lakes. Everybody look outside right now. Now, the wind isn't blowing a whole lot, but it is blowing a little bit. Can we see a little bit of movement outside? You can hear wind too. When wind blows through the cracks in your house, it can sound like somebody whistling. If the wind blows very hard, it can sound like a wild animal howling. You guys ever heard that before? Like the wind blowing and it sounds like somebody's outside going You guys ever seen that before? Heard that before? You can see the wind move things. You can hear the wind. You can feel the wind too. Stand by an open window and let the breeze tickle your face. A strong gust of light or a light breeze. Wind is moving air. But what makes air move? You can make air move with a fan or by flapping a piece of cloth or paper. But fans don't make the wind. What makes the wind blows across the fields and forests and mountains? What makes the wind that whips around tall buildings of the city? Have you guys ever been in front of a fan before? Yeah. yeah. You can feel the wind blow, right? All right. All of the earth is surrounded by air. Earth and the air around it are heated by the sun. But some parts of the earth heat up more than the other parts. In the tropical parts of the earth, near the equator, does anybody know where the equator is? Where? 
In the middle. It is in the absolute middle of the earth. Good. Very good. In the tropical parts of the earth near the equator, the sun's rays strike the earth directly. The air gets very, very hot. Near the earth's icy poles, the sun's rays strike at a slant, so the air stays cooler. When hot air and cold air change places, wind is made. It's pretty cool, right? That's pretty neat. Hot air is lighter than cold air, so hot air rises. People discovered this a long time ago and used hot air to make balloons float. Anybody ever seen a hot air balloon before? They are really, really neat. The heated air in the balloons was lighter than the cooler air outside. The hot, light air made the balloons float upwards. When heated air over the earth rises, cooler, heavier air rushes in to take its place. The moving air is wind. So we can see the cold air here at the top of the earth mixing with the warm air in the middle of the earth. And what happens when those meet is wind. The sun's rays strike the equator directly. That's why it gets hotter there. But some things get hotter than others because of what they're made of. You can discover this for yourself. When you go outside, feel the sidewalk on a hot day. It gets really hot. It's probably warmer than the grass beside it. The air above is warmer too. You may see shimmering heat waves as the hot air rises above the sidewalk. Everybody, anybody ever seen that before? You look out over a parking lot, especially like a dark parking lot, and it looks like it's all wavy. Those are heat rays. Like the sidewalk and grass, land and water heat up differently too. On sunny summer days, the land gets warmer than the water. The air over the land also gets warmer. The warm air rises and cool winds blow in from the sea. Has anybody ever been to the beach before? Yeah. Or a lake or anything like that with a big body of water? Outside when you're out playing on the sand and stuff like that, you ever got super, super hot? But it's a really hot day, so the air's hot, and the sand's hot, and you're hot, and you just, uh, just feel miserable. And you can go in the water and cool off. Anybody ever done that before? It feels a lot cooler in the water than outside because water heats up differently than land. Some winds blow gently. Others blow fast. You can see how fast the winds are blowing by watching how things around you move. A gentle wind makes leaves dance just a little bit. It just makes the leaves dance a little bit. A stronger wind may flap clothes on a line. A very strong wind can even make heavy trees bend and sway. Storms like hurricanes bring the strongest winds of all. Storm winds may blow very fast, more than 100 miles per hour. That's about as twice as fast as cars go on the highway. These winds are strong enough to knock trees down. How crazy is that? Has anybody ever seen any really strong winds before? I know I have. You can see how strong the wind is by doing an experiment. With a bicycle, stand so the wind is blowing in your face. Now ride into the wind. Feel how hard it is to pedal. Then turn your bicycle around and ride with the wind, pushing you along. It, isn't it easier to pedal now? That's pretty cool. That's an experiment you guys can do on a windy day before it gets too cold out. The wind can carry your kite towards the clouds or lift a glider. Some birds soar on the wind without moving their wings. Sailboats are pushed along by the wind blowing against their sails. Anybody ever seen a sailboat before? Those are pretty cool. Have you all ever seen a bird flying in the wind and it doesn't look like it's moving? It's just kind of hanging out. It just got his, it has his wings out just like that and it looks like it's just kind of soaring, it's gliding. They do that with the wind. People have used the power of moving air for thousands of years. 
Windmills are wind-powered machines. The blades of a windmill turn when the wind pushes against them. The turning blades move other, uh, move other parts to lift the water. They can grind grain, it can saw wood, or even make electricity. And that's called wind energy. Have you guys ever seen those big giant windmills that turn? A lot of times they're on really tall mountains and they're super, super big. Those turn turbines that allow the wind to make energy. Yeah. Wind brings changes in the weather. Rainstorms blow in with the wind and out again as the wind pushes the clouds along. Weather forecasters want to know where the wind is coming from so they can see what weather will be blown in with it. We name winds according to the direction they come from. A west wind blows from the west, and there are east winds, north winds, and south winds. All right? So we can see all different directions that the wind is coming from. In some parts of the world, people have given special names to the wind that blows there. A Chinook is a wind that blows from the Rocky Mountains of the United States. A Chinook is so warm that in winter it can melt deep snow in just a few hours. A Sirocco is a hot, dry wind that blows in from Northern Africa. That's pretty cool, right? Those are pretty neat facts. Wind is moving air. All around us, the wind is at work. It carries seeds of plants to new places where they can take root and grow, but powerful winds can also carry away the soil that plants need. Wind can even change the strongest rocks. Bits of sand that the wind carries pound at those rocks and wear them away. The wearing away is called erosion. Some wind eroded rocks have strange shapes. Trees are even shaped by the wind, and so are sand dunes. Now we do nature hikes here on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Yeah, Tuesdays and Thursdays. So if you come to our nature hikes, we may even be able to look at some of the eroded rocks and ways that wind affects the different uh, plants out there. The wind blows gently. The wind blows strong. See it, hear it, feel the wind. You can figure out which way the wind is blowing by watching a leaf, a piece of cloth, or string, or a weather vane. A weather vane's arrow will point in the direction that the wind is coming from. You guys ever seen one of those before? A weather vane is usually on top of a roof or something, and it will um, move with the direction of the wind. And it kind of turns, some are even shaped like a chicken. I've seen weather vanes shaped like a chicken before. Yeah, that's a weather vane. And if you all want to take a picture of how to make your own weather vane right in the back of this book, we can teach you and you can take a picture of it to make your own weather vane at home. Pretty neat, huh? All right, and here, if you want to pause this, is how to make your own weather vane at home. All right. Pretty cool book, right? Yeah. All right, now we are going to do a science experiment that talks a little bit more and shows you how weather works and how air moves. You guys ready for this? Yeah. All right, all right, we're going to cut this and get right back to our experiment. Okay, now this is a pretty cool experiment that even you, you guys can do at home with some pretty simple materials and coffee. Need lots of that. All right, so what you're going to need is some hot water. You're going to need a couple of pans, just like this. These are just glass little pans, just like that. You're going to need one that is cold and filled with ice. You want to fill this with just a little bit of water. All right, you're going to fill this with a little bit of water here. We should just need that one. We'll let that, we'll put a little bit more in here. And don't worry, we're going to recycle. All right. 
so we've got some cold water here and then we've got some hot water in the thermos okay so this was boiling water so this is very very hot so when you do this make sure you've got some parental supervision here to make sure that you don't burn yourself because you can really really hurt yourself with boiling water okay so definitely have a parent or an adult help you when you do this and then you're going to need some different water bottles so we're going to do an experiment here with some different water bottles now these water bottles don't have anything in them they are empty right it's just got a little bit of water so we've got a little water bottle we've got a medium-sized water bottle and then we have a big water bottle now these are empty but what did we learn about air is there air inside this yes. yeah air is everywhere taking up something called volume now volume is the amount of space inside of an object now we can't see the gases right but we can see the gases effect on other things so when we see wind we can't really see wind but we can see wind rustling the trees moving stuff things like that so what we're going to do is we are going to try to trap the gas inside of our bottles here so we are going to take a balloon right we're going to take a balloon and put over here so when if we squeeze it we can see that there is air inside and there's gas inside of our bottles and we're going to do that for all three bottles now remember there is nothing inside these bottles other than just air right so there is not a whole lot of air inside this balloon right now but if we squeeze it we can see air right so we're going to do that one and then we're going to do one more all right now see if you guys were paying attention there were two different temperatures of air hot air and cold air hot air do you remember what direction hot air goes does it rise or does it fall rise. hot air rises man you guys had your listening ears on great job and cold air goes where yeah. down now we're before we do this experiment this is one of my favorite things that i love to be able to teach in my classroom we are going to talk about why things are hot and why things are cold right so hot things have more energy so if we are going to heat something up we are going to add more energy to that thing so if we're talking about air we are going to add more energy to air which means the air molecules are going to be going crazy but if we take away that energy they're going to start to slow down and fall so we are going to do an experiment here called the blowtorch ice cube right so i want you to hold your hand just like this right and i want you to imagine that you have an ice cube in your hand Woo! is your hand getting cold ah, ah, ice cube ice cube ice cube and then we are going to take a blowtorch to that ice cube right here but this is a special blowtorch of science that is not going to burn your hand so the blowtorch is right here and it's spitting fire down and all this heat energy onto your ice cube what happens to your ice cube when it's got the blowtorch on it? It melts. it melts. Now, we have just had something called a phase change. We've gone from a solid to a liquid. Now, that water is now on your table, but you've still got that blowtorch of science on the water, and it starts to boil. And then it looks like the water is just going away. And it does something called evaporate. And it turns into a gas, right? So, we have had three phase changes when we've added energy to the ice, right? Now, this is what the molecules are doing. Everybody hold their hands just like this and put them together. And now squeeze your heart. Now, barely move your fingers. Maybe just a little bit. Little bit, little bit, little bit. Right now, you are looking at water molecules frozen in ice. They are barely moving a little bit. Now. We want to make those molecules dance. So, uh oh, the blowtorch of science is right here and it's blowing energy on your hand. Oh, look what's happening now. Everybody do this. Now, 
It's dancing. The molecules are dancing all over each other and then they start to really go crazy and they're going all over the place. Now, this is what the molecules look like in water. Wow, those molecules are slipping and sliding all over each other. But we've still got the blowtorch of science on us and they are getting crazy. And now, our molecules are going all over the place and they gotta have room to dance. Oh my gosh, they have to have room to dance. Ah! We are looking at what molecules do when they turn into gas, right? Now, they're dancing. They turn the blowtorch off. Whew, I'm getting tired. Oh man, uh-oh, uh-oh, oh, they're coming, uh-oh. Now gas is turning back to liquid. Uh-oh, oh, now it's getting really cold in here. Oh, it's really cold. Oh, it's really cold again. Oh no, now we're back to ice. So when we take away energy, those molecules stop moving around so much and they start to collapse back in on themselves. Air does the same thing. That's why heat rises. Once you have more energy from the sun, heat rises because it's got so much energy in the molecules. But you take away that energy and now the air cools down and it falls down to the ground, right? And we're gonna see that today. All right, so we are gonna try three different sizes here. Now we are going to put this water bottle we're going to pour some really, really, really hot water into this tub here, all right? This is really, really hot. Can you guys see the steam here? Yeah. All right, so we are going to pour some water very carefully into this tub. That's really, really, really hot water. Now remember, we only, only, only have air inside of our water bottles, right? And we have trapped that air in there by the balloon. So the air in here is just kind of floating around, but let's see what happens when we heat up and add energy to the water bottle. Let's see what happens. What's happening? Now, I'm not doing anything, I'm just holding it there. What's happening, guys? We're adding energy to that air. It's heating up that air. And what's, do, what's happening right here to the water, or to the, uh, the balloon? The air's coming into the balloon. Right, the air is going into the balloon. Now, I'm not doing a thing. I'm just holding it down here so it doesn't, so it doesn't float, right? But all I'm doing is that. Now, you guys may think I'm pushing on it or I'm adding something to it or something like that. I'm not. So let's see what happens if we put this bottle that has the air, the hot air in it, into cold water. Let's see what happens. What do you think is going to happen? Hmm. Oh, I can see it kind of going down. It's taking a little bit, but it's going down. All right, so it takes a little bit of time for that hot air on the inside to start to cool down, but look what's happening to the balloon. Can you guys see that? Oh, there it went, right? So that's an experiment of how we can see how heat rises, but once you take away that energy and you cool down that air, it will drop down uh, back, into the, back into the bottle, right? So let's see what happens again when we put it back in the hot water. Now we're heating the air back up. We're adding more energy. And now we're right back, we're right back into the balloon. Now this is a really big bottle, right? So let's do an experiment with a smaller bottle. Now, we're gonna use a modified scientific method here, right? A scientific method is the process of when you do an experiment. And one of those is we do, we're gonna do a hypothesis. Now hypothesis is a word for an educated guess. So we have a smaller bottle here, same thing. It's full of air, it's got a balloon on it. What do you think is going to happen when we put this bottle into the hot water? It's gonna blow up, right? I think so, I think that's a solid hypothesis. What do you think is gonna happen when we put it into the cold? It's going to deflate. How fast 
do you think it is going to blow up in relation to this one? Do you think it's going to be faster or slower? Faster. Faster? Okay. And why? Does this bottle have as much air as this bottle in it? No, because it is smaller. It is smaller. So the gas has less volume to heat up, which means we add energy to it and it is going to heat up faster. That's a great hypothesis. Now we get to test our hypothesis. All right, let's go. Let's see. Oh. That was pretty quick, right? That was really quick. Now I can actually feel this bottle getting really, really tight too. So it is really heating up that air. Okay, so we kept this in here for a little bit. Now what you can do at home is you can have a stopwatch, right? And you can put a bottle in here for a certain amount of time and you can compare all three. And you can really do a cool experiment. So if you're ever doing a science lab or a uh, science fair, this is a good one, all right? Now, we're gonna take it out and we're gonna put it in the cold and let's see how long it takes it. Oh, that's pretty quick, right? That was pretty quick. Now, why do you think, why do you think it did that? Very good. The smaller bottle has less air. Let's put it back in here and see what happens. It's pretty quick. It's